How do you become America's best-selling brand? Shoulder pads, helmet, safety first. Have fun out there, guys. Be the hammer, not the nail. Lead with the shoulder, drive through the body. Wrap the arm, go, go, go! Who are you? Mama's building champions. Whoa. Safe, tough, and game day ready. That's Ford, and that's how you become America's best-selling brand. Now get up to $10,790 in total savings on F-150, plus eligible first responders receive $1,000 more in appreciation cash. BC 7 News at 11 starts now with breaking news. And we start with that breaking news now. Remains found out of state may be connected to a local case. The parents of a missing teen from Prince George's County now on the way to North Carolina. And Tim Barber joins us with the latest. Tim, what do we know and what are we waiting to find out at this point? Well, this has been a gut-wrenching night for Ashanti Billy's family. The 19-year-old's parents, who are from Prince George's County, went to North Carolina to see the, if the body belongs to their daughter. We called the FBI, but agents are not telling us anything about tonight's investigation. All we know is that a body was found outside a Charlotte church. The FBI has not confirmed if it's Billy. The church where the unidentified body was found is a six hour drive from Norfolk, where the teen disappeared on September 18th. Investigators believe Billy was last seen entering a Navy base there where she worked at a blimpy store. Her car was found nearby, which only adds to the mystery tonight. We're going to keep pressing the FBI for more, for more information and we'll bring it to you as soon as we get it. Nancy. All right, Tim, thank you. And more breaking news now. Grand jury has indicted one of the men charged with raping a high school classmate in Frederick. 19 year old Victor Gonzalez Gutierrez indicted on charges of kidnapping and rape. Police say he and another teen held their classmate captive and raped her while a third person filmed the entire attack. Police are still searching for that third suspect. I'm Michelle Marsh at the live desk with breaking news and an arrest in a sexual assault on a trail last night. Police say Jeremiah Tolley may be tied to other cases as well. Right now, he's accused of grabbing a woman from behind and groping her on a bike trail near Waples Mill Road and Random Hills Road in Fairfax. The woman was not injured. By the way, in the last two weeks, police say five women have been assaulted. Police now trying to determine if it was the same man. We'll be sure to stay on top of this one. Back to you. All right, Michelle, thank you. And get breaking news anytime straight to your phone. Sign up for text alerts at WJLA.com slash text. Well, this just into the ABC 7 newsroom tonight. We have our first look at surveillance video from last night's attempted ATM theft. This is right outside Nationals Park, believe it or not. And take a closer look. You can see here a U-Haul truck that was stolen just about a block from the park. The would-be thieves backed the truck into the ATM. They tried to dislodge it. They were unable to move it or steal any money, but they took off in a tan pickup truck. If you know anything about this, please contact police. And right now, sleeping out at a D.C. park to raise awareness and call for change after a deadly robbery in that area. 16-year-old Eric Kelly, just the latest life cut short by that violence. And Hugh McRae is live now with how community leaders are vowing to get justice for him and others like him. Hugh? Yeah, well, it's just a matter of time now before the people here behind me pull out their sleeping bags and find themselves a place to sleep on the ground. Why? Well, this is where Zaire Kelly was shot and killed at the intersection of 13th and Downing. And the people you see here behind me, well, they walked a mile to get here. This group is walking to push for change and speak for a young man who can no longer speak for himself, Zaire Kelly. When a person uses a gun, to solve a conflict, it's a problem. D.C. Councilman Kenyon McDuffie, surrounded by local community leaders, led the demonstration to, quote, reclaim their community. That's what's going to take away the level of desperation for young people feeling like they got to put guns in their hand and go out there and essentially hunt or prey on other people. We told you about 16-year-old Kelly, who was killed in an attempted armed robbery. Police say 19-year-old Sequan Gillis shot Kelly after Kelly stabbed him in self-defense. Gillis also died. That dream will never come true for him, but that does not negate the fact that it cannot come true for other young people in this city. Kelly was murdered just blocks away from where college-bound Jamari Sidnor was killed by a stray bullet. Both Kelly and Sidnor had plans to attend Florida A&M University. Sidnor was raised in Ward 5. Kelly was also raised in Ward 5, and the people you see here behind us, well, they're their neighbors, they're their family, they're their community. And they tell me they would sleep out here in the cold, on the grass, in sleeping bags. 
at any point in the future to bring the same awareness to violence. So that's the latest show live tonight from Northeast Washington. I'm Hugh McRae, ABC 7 News. And your first forecast here at 11 o'clock. We're looking at some cooler weather settling in tonight. So good for the sleeping bags out there with Q because it will be a cool night. They can fall. We'll start to see some of those leaves changing before you know it. But just take a look outside right now and talk about, you know, a week ago today, that is exactly when fall kicked off. However, the first few days of fall, we had temperatures in the 90s, so it wasn't very fall like. Well, that has changed. You felt it today. Temperatures only in the mid 70s. And when you wake up tomorrow morning and head out the door, it'll be even cooler. Upper 40s for Winchester to Luray at 45, 52 in Leesburg, 51 in Frederick. A crisp start to the day tomorrow. Through the afternoon, though, tomorrow we'll make it into the low 70s with a bit of a breeze. We'll talk about the rest of the weekend's outlook, plus the 10 day coming up in a bit. All right, Brian, thank you. We turn now to the crisis in the Caribbean. This is a people are dying story. This is a life or death story. That is the mayor of San Juan outraged tonight after acting Homeland Security Secretary Elaine Duke told reporters the progress in Puerto Rico is, quote, a good news story. Well, maybe from where she's standing, it's a good news story. When you're drinking from a creek, it's not a good news story. When you don't have food for a baby, it's not a good news story. When you have to pull people down from their buildings, because, you, you know, that, I'm sorry, but that really upsets me and frustrates me. So the crisis is still playing out as millions are just simply cut off, unable to get vital food, medicine and supplies. Some say help is not coming fast enough, even as more than 10,000 federal civilian and military personnel 